Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today we're here at the residence of Brad, who lives here in the Hollywood Hills, California, which is in Los Angeles County. And we're at a, what I call a Moroccan Garden of Eden. We're going to see over 100 different fruit trees and get a lot of educational tips on how to successfully grow them. Let's check these out. On a lot of the trees. I, I've, I've been doing it for over over a year now. Great. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of background, a little bit of history, and where we are today, and where we're going in the future. Um, the products, when you look for Ivory Organics, whether it's on the internet or um, some stores, are hopefully starting to carry it more so in Northern California. In Southern California, our first accounts that we picked up was last year Home Depot. Sears, Walmart, Amazon, but it's all the dot coms. But in regards to distrib distributorship, we've got Harmony Farms in Northern California, Arbico Organics in Phoenix, Arizona, um, and there's about a half a dozen stores. But Brad and I are working together to line up the distributors to get them into more of your local nurseries throughout the country and eventually around the world. Um, the products do sell all around the world. We've sold thousands um, to all countries, and the products what you'll see right now they come either in a pint size can a gallon size can as well as a ready use spray bottle the concept behind ivory organics is it started off as you may know a lot of growers that say the first thing the, the person that comes to mind most recently was um, Dave Wilson nursery Tom Spellman was the speaker and he said before I install any tree the first thing I do is I whitewash my tree and it's like but well, what's the concept behind whitewash and if you google the word whitewash what they're looking at specifically is protection from winter frost. It's typically those warm days in the winter followed by those freezing, not cold, but you know, below 32 degrees Fahrenheit freezing nights. What happens is the saps in the tree start moving, but the roots are still in a cold soil and the saps there aren't moving. And what ultimately happens is you might notice the bark starting to crack. Um, so what, when you hear the word whitewash, it's typically used you know, when you hear like Ivory Organics, I usually, you know, generally categorize it as a sunblock for plants, an organic sunblock for plants. But it's not just sunblock, it's, you got to be thinking winter. The products historically sell, as most plant products typically plummet sales in the winter because people are not doing things in the winter. But it's in the winter that you actually are protecting your plants from what's known as sun scald, which is a phenomenon, again, with warm days followed by freezing nights where the bark will crack. But it's not just cracking. There's things internally, just like the, if you do enough research, you'll, you'll see some of the things that I'm talking about, where the vessels are analogous to the plumbing in your house. When it freezes, you know, if you live in New York, New Jersey, in these freezing climates, and you got the, you know, the plumbing that's exposed to that, you know, that free, freezing weather, the pipes will start rupturing and they'll stop working. That's damage. So it's not just visual damage where the bark is cracking. There's protection that's underlying and happening within the cellular level of the tree that's affecting it if it's damaged by sun scald, which again is that winter phenomenon. In the summer, it's sunburn. Sunburn on the tree trunks, sunburn on the tree branches, sunburn even on the leaves. You'll notice sometimes when you install a brand new plant, it immediately stresses and exhibits all this you know, wilting, which is happening predominantly because it's losing a lot of water, the roots have, have been disrupted. Applying the product even as a foliar protection will help the plants. In regards to the evolution of the products, it is pretty much a replacement to those people that would typically go to a store. I don't want to mention any names because some of them are selling our products, but they'll go into their paint department store and buy a paint and use paint simply to whitewash and, and, and accomplish those goals. But paints, if you take a look at the back of it, for one, they're, most of them are labeled carcinogenic. Two, they have algicides and fungicides, and algicide being plant also can harm your plant tissues. And at the end of the day, these paints, predominantly latex-based paint is what's used. If you're going to use the paint, there's you know, discussion about indoor, outdoor paint. I'm just going to quickly share this, but um, if you were to use a paint, any thoughts on if you're going to use an indoor and outdoor paint and why? Let me see if I can get some engagement out there. Indoor paint? Anybody think, think outdoor because it's going to be on your outdoor tree? Why less toxic? You're right with the indoor, by the way. So the outdoor paints have 
more added protection so that it's gonna last that much longer than the indoor paint. So it's got more preservatives, more damaging chemicals within the product than what your indoor paints would otherwise be. But what Ivory Organics does is it's an all organic based product. And then where the patent lies is we've then infused seven natural garden oils, which I'll just read down the list. Castor oil is, if you take a look at natural repellent for rodents, so you guys were discussing how do I get the rodents off my trees, castor oil is one of those ingredients, if you take a look at a lot of the products on the shelf, how do I naturally get rid of and repel rodents off my property, and they're typically castor based. Um, other oils include cinnamon, clove, cedarwood, garlic, peppermint, and rosemary. So you've got these seven oils that are in there, and if you apply it as a brush on, for example, onto your tree trunk and branches, and this is again another important application of the winter, even though there's a lot of benefits now in the summer, trying to make sure we sell a lot of product in the winter as well, is, is to basically coat your plants to protect it from girdling. The rats and the rodents and the squirrels and whatever else that are starving typically in the winter will resort to gnawing on a tree to get to those saps and sugars. So by coating the product with the ivory organics and it's got now these seven oils in it, you do brush coat number one, brush coat number two, and now you've created a barrier with all of these flavors that are natural repellents, one to the rodents, secondarily with any pruned branch, and for example, if you prune this branch off, there's gonna be wood that's exposed. The wood, which is the center supporting structure to this entire massive tree, is protected by the bark, and underneath the bark, the cambium tissues, and these are all layers of defenses. By adding ivory organics to the exposed prune area, you're now telling the bugs to stay out while eventually it's gonna heal over it and, and close up. Yes. Real quickly, I wanted to add, um, never, never, never use a rodenticide or any poison for, for rodents. It's, it's, it's a terrible thing because what happens is um, it, it has a blood thinner in it. And when, those, when the mice and the ground squirrels start moving slowly, they get caught by uh, bobcats. I've got bobcats in the area. Um, you know, they could be caught by a regular cat. That poison goes from that ground squirrel, that rat, any of those, those pests, and goes into those beautiful animals that, that we, uh, we appreciate. That we, we have three bobcat that go through the area. I met the lady from UCLA that was trapping at the end of our uh, driveway, trapping them to, to study them. And she said that she caught them and tested them. She said that the bobcat had signs of rodenticide in the blood of, of a blood thinner, and that they, they, they found one, um, and of course what it does is like with mountain lions, it causes mange, they lose, they can even die from it. Um, they, they, they found one dead female that was, that was hit by a car with a, with a, with, and, they, and they tested the fetus. The fetus had uh, the, the, the rodent side also traces of it. So anyway, this is, that's, I don't ever suggest poisoning and I, I, it's much better to repel. Yeah, so um, I know Anthony and I were talking before the meeting about how do you control, I've got a mole in my property that is wreaking havoc throughout. It's, I'm pretty sure it's just one. And the tunnels just go and go and go. And, you know, the first thing I did was try to collapse the holes to try to see if I can find it. Ran with my hose. I mean, I get lucky one out of ten times. And this only happens to me about once or twice a year. I've got walls all around my property. It's pretty, you know, unlike this property where it's open in nature. Mine, I've kind of got complete control. But I lose it at least once or twice a year, like I said. Um, so, I mean, one idea was, you know, just trying to just physically try to trap it and catch it. When it comes to pest control, and the Ivory Organics products, again, are repellents. They're not pesticides. They're not, um, it's not going to poison the rodents. It's not going to poison the insects. I mean, the insects, it's only creating a barrier, just as your tree trunk is creating a barrier to say, stay out. Um, but the three ways of controlling rodents, specifically, is one, and also insects. One is to look for something that's called a repellent. So, again, we talked about castor oil being in the product. Castor oil is specifically to say, I don't taste good. If you apply, there's a product that's on the shelf you can use where you buy a granular castor oil, which I believe is infused with like cornmeal. And you'll scatter all over your property and then start watering. And what's gonna happen is the castor will work its way into the soil. And, um, and then all the things in the soil will taste like castor oil, which will then naturally repel the rodents. And they'll go to your neighbor's property instead. So that's, that's the repellent. The second one, as Brad talked about, was poison. And poison, again, is frowned upon, and I think all of us live in a community where there's wildlife, and I'm also a believer where if you do the right thing on your property, you improve the planet, and if you do the wrong things, then you harm the planet. It's not just your backyard, but 
you're ruining the water stream, the lakes, the ocean, the, the fish that we're all consuming. You're messing up the cycle compared to improving the cycle. If you're planting trees, you're improving the air, you're you know, improving the soil, you're creating biology, you're supporting the birds to, you know, the whole, the whole food web that lives in your community, if you do it right, you're improving the planet. If you do it wrong and you're buying, buying the, the poisons and the, um, and the chemical ways of treating, we talked about leaf mine or scale and all these things, you're damaging the planet, not just your backyard. Um, so we talked about repellents, poisons, and the last one is traps. So, and traps is another way of either catching and releasing or catching and disposing or whatever. But the traps is the other way. The natural flow of ways to control it, you should always attempt to repel first, trap second, and poison should not be an option when you know shopping for these things. Again, the, the benefits behind the product is it's been proven to hold onto the tree better than using just one alone, like lime, for example, by itself. The combinations of what it, what it, what's gone into our base will hold on to the plant better. With the oils that's infused, it'll create layers of protection. And that goes back into, my background is biology. I graduated from UC Irvine um, and worked in surgery and I've published a few you know, articles in national journals of surgery, working with pharmaceuticals that kind of relate to this product in the sense that it, I'll tell you one of the projects I worked on dealt with antibiotics and when doing surgery on an individual with prosthetics in there, one of the main issues doctors are dealing with is, um, is controlling bacteria on the prosthetic parts. Your body can naturally heal, it can send out the antibodies to, um, to combat and control any foreign products that are on your prosthetics. But the risk is when you've got like for example an artery that has to be replaced with like a straw let's say which is a you know plastic you know part what the surgeons were doing is they're adding antibiotics that were encapsulated in a lipid it was um the product specifically is called lipid encapsulated amikacin so the lipid is the fat amikacin the anti antibiotic so that's in the product and then they'll insert it at the side of the surgery so that as the as the body heals post-surgery and the natural antibodies in the body come back, which are days or weeks later as you, as you gain your strength, what's happening is the antibodies are still at the site. You're not just taking them orally, they're not just coming intravenously. There's still antibodies that are breaking down at the site over the course of weeks, months, you know, and, and, and protecting the site until the body ultimately controls preventing any infection on the prosthetic part. So it's kind of some of that that was brought in plus my passion of plants. And I like how Brad shared how this inspiration came from his dad, whereas for me, it came from my mom and my mom, I know picked it up from her grandfather. And um, you can see that we're doing this video here where um, it's been growing so rapidly on YouTube. We um, just went onto YouTube in October, less than two years ago. Um, with our first YouTube video kind of demonstrating examples in April of last year. So we're talking about in less than 18 months, we've now got over 15,000 subscribers. We average about five to 10,000 views per day, watching about 140 different educational videos relating to plant care. Um, but what I feel like this is doing and inspiring aside from all of you that are here today, and the reason I'm memorializing this with the video is to help those that, for one, already have the passion, but also to help more so the ones that never got inspired by somebody else within the family. And hopefully we bring them into what's a relatively inexpensive hobby with tremendous upswing, one, to your health and your family, in addition to the community, as we talked about. If you do things right on your property, you're really benefiting your entire community, as Brad's done here um, in Hollywood Hills. So, any other questions for me before I pass the floor? Yes, sir. I mean, the value I see in doing all these things with fruits and vegetables, which is the majority of my landscape, both front and backyard, is I'm putting my time, energy, and resources and money, my water, on things that will hopefully benefit me and my family. Um, so, you know, even though I know I'm going to lose some to pests, like for example, on one of my tomatoes, there's a tomato hornworm, and those turn into these beautiful, giant, I forgot the name of the um, moth, but they create the moths that then come and pollinate your tomato flowers also in the evening. So I've seen them at night, you know, pollinating my flowers. I'm like, why would you, if it's eating enough leaves to the point that it's not harming also the health of the tomato, then keep it. With the aphids, 
if I see some aphids on the plant, I'm like, good, I've got some prey to benefit the predators in my garden. I don't necessarily kill the aphids, not on first sight. I'll watch it. If it compromises the health of the plant, then I'll, then I'll have to start looking at repellent options, you know, maybe pruning it off and throwing it, you know, in another part of the garden or something, you know, to, to help save the life of the plant. But it's steps and you got to look at things, you know, you know, in, in, in degrees of severity. Um, but it is, you know, hopefully you're still enjoying those many, many trees that are living one on top of another. And crows are, I mean, the crows are very smart. When they see you come out, they'll leave. Otherwise, they're coming a flock. They yeah, yeah. Like, but at the end of the day, you might just have to net a certain part of the tree. It, 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 it might not be manageable to cover the entire thing. Yeah, the squirrels yeah. cut through it with their teeth. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Anyway, I'm just, it lowers cholesterol. So if you've enjoyed this educational opportunity brought to you by Ivory Organics in conjunction with the California Rare, Rare Fruit Growers of California, specifically the West Los Angeles chapter. If you've liked this, be sure to like it. And most importantly, by subscribing below, you'll be connected to this and all the other educational gardening videos. Thanks again for watching. And happy gardening.